This is the way most work usually gets done in a group. Several individuals get together, discuss a common project, and then the work gets divided among the individuals. But when each person here goes back to their own desk or their own personal computer, the group dynamic is lost. And even if they're all connected via a network, the work process is still not quite the same. The solution to this problem is called Groupware, a special kind of software designed to simulate this traditional process of working together as a team. Today we'll take a look at Groupware on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, designer and manufacturer of advanced personal computer systems and communications peripherals, including multimedia and graphics products. Cardinal Technologies, where computer products are designed and manufactured in the USA, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffe. LANs are great and network email is great, but a computer still doesn't have the smarts of a good secretary when it comes to handling communications from coworkers. That is until this program came along called Beyond Mail. Let me show you how it works. This is the Beyond Mail uh, screen over here, and this is the inbox, and normally, of course, all my email would be piled into this one place. But with Beyond Mail, I can create separate folders, and it can sort the mail for me. Here are stories having to do with Dow Jones numbers. Here are news stories having to do with the release of the hostages. Here is a personal mail folder, a letter from my brother. Here is an urgent mail folder, uh, a piece of mail from the boss. Which, uh, of course, I can open up any one of these uh, messages as you would in a normal email system and scroll through and read and so on and so forth. Let me show you what's interesting about this is the way you set up these rules. I go to the rule menu and manage, and you see the different rule sets I have. These are the rules I created for those news feeds. These are the rules I created for the hostage stories, and as I open up, uh, you'll see what the rules were. If the piece of email is coming from Comtex, if it includes keywords hostage, Anderson, or Sicipio, the rule is move the message to the news hostages folder. Well, this is one approach to groupware, and today we'll look at several other approaches, including Lotus Notes, Higgins, Instant Update, Meeting Maker, and Aspects. Now, groupware is still a new concept, and developers are still trying to figure out exactly what it should be. So to start out today, we're going to visit the Institute for the Future in Menlo Park, California, where they've formed the Groupware Users Project. The Institute for the Future, known as IFTF, is a nonprofit research firm that specializes in new information systems. They put together the Groupware Users Project to find out more about the consequences of using groupware. And the results so far are somewhat surprising, showing that groupware can be a two-edged sword you have the opportunity to make an organization more participatory and more open and more flexible than it's ever been before. But on the other hand, you also have the potential to make it more structured and more rigid and more inflexible than it's ever been before. And what the software does is create the opportunity to move in either direction. And it's up to us, it's up to the humans in the middle to make the decisions about which way that goes. Johansson says groupware can have a very beneficial effect on business, helping employees to concentrate on the task at hand rather than who came up with a particular idea. In that way, the computer terminal becomes a workplace equalizer. Johansson also says that groupware should not be thought of as a quick cure for organizational communication problems, but as a long-term strategy for team building. So the benefit of, of groupware when it works is that it helps a team get done what they have to get done. It's defined very, very pragmatically. And the most effective forms of groupware that I've seen are those that relieve pain. But it's more than just a roll aids effect where it relieves pain in the short term. It actually reaches out to the future and changes the way that teams work together over a longer period of time. The preliminary conclusions of the Groupware Users Project at IFTF is that the fast pace of today's business requires a groupware mentality. Johansson says that groupware has to succeed. It's just a question of how long it takes for the software to mature. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
We're going to take a look now at the latest versions of two groupware products, Lotus Notes and Higgins. And here to help us out are Eric Saul of Lotus and Howard Case of Enable Software. Eric, the term groupware is one of these mystery words right now, somewhat like uh, AI. I mean, a lot of products say they have their groupware. Uh, how do you define it? What, what do you call groupware at Lotus? Groupware is really any software that's designed to help people work together more effectively. And um, it's really not a product category as much as a, a, a a type of software and, and, and ideas that, that filter in a lot of okay, kinds we'll of software. We'll have to define it by examples then. Right. <laughs> Howard, let's turn to you and Higgins. What is Higgins? What approach does that take to groupware? It, it approaches it from the standpoint of an office system, a suite of functions that are built around electronic mail, mm -hmm. all of which are designed to allow the, the information that's carried in electronic mail to be integrated with an individual and with the group's daily work. Right, you've got the Higgins screen up here and show yeah, us how this yeah, works. Yeah, we sure do. Um, what you see in the upper left-hand corner is a bar graph representation of somebody's day so they can mm -hmm. see what they've got to deal with right off the bat. There's a, a detail behind that. There's also a Rolodex that we've got here where you can store um, information about the people with whom you do business. And there's a, a to-do list uh, for keeping uh, your commitments available. But all of this is sitting on a relational database that ties this information mm -hmm. together. And more importantly, the electronic messages that are carried with email for communications are tied into this same system. Here's the in-basket uh, that when you receive new mail and new information that comes in, and it all comes into this one spot, including, mm -hmm. as you can see here, phone messages and requests to attend meetings and right. so forth. So lots of different kinds of messages are sitting in the box. Lots of different kinds kinds of messages and the first thing that the user wants to do is to be able to filter that out to mm -hmm. find out what's important to them. If I've been out of the office, I might want to just see my phone messages when I come back. Okay? I also might want to know what the boss has sent me so that I can uh, get to those right away. Uh -huh. uh, the um, uh, other main area that, that Higgins works with is, is helping people put together meetings, to, uh, uh, group scheduling and uh, using the, uh, this function right here. Um, it brings up the list of people that's available on the network. Now, these people don't necessarily uh, work in the same office or in the same location. But they're on the network. But they're on the network mm -hmm. somewhere, and Higgins keeps uh, the, the tables of where, the, uh, where this, their data is located, and um, I'm able to even pull out resources here. I might want to get a conference room for these people to meet in, see if it's available. So all their calendars and the schedule of that room is really in this database. Yeah, they're in separate databases, mm -hmm. and right, right then what Higgins did was went to those databases, retrieved those, and brought them back here so that right away we can see we've got a hole in the calendar for it. at lunch. We can have, uh, uh -huh. have a meeting, and uh, we can say, okay, go ahead, let's schedule this thing. Higgins. So Higgins, in fact, will suggest the best time. Yes, it did right there. It picked a one-hour meeting from 12 to 1. If I say that's fine, uh, let's go ahead and send a message to everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, this will uh, request their attendance. If they accept that, it'll put it on their calendar right at that point with the notes that I send them. Mm -hmm. and in fact, I could send a spreadsheet along with this, which might have a budget yeah. that they should review for the meeting. So that's uh, uh, really a, a very useful function in Higgins. Uh, but as I mentioned, this relational database that, mm -hmm. that ties this information together, um, I can use this retrieval screen here, and I could type in, for instance, the OA committee, Oh, I, mean, I typed that wrong, but that's okay. It keeps track of these words for me. I can just pull that one up and uh, say, go find all of the things related mm -hmm. to the OA committee. Well, there's three people. That's a, a, a directory listing, somebody in the Rolodex. Here's the next action item that, that we're working on together. Uh, here's electronic mail, which would have a threaded conversation yeah, of the yeah. different people that are involved in this. So that you kind of get these ad hoc databases that individuals create and that uh, can be shared with everybody right, on the right. network. Of course, there's a lot of confidentiality as well. Each individual can define what's private so that other people don't have yeah. access to them. All right, well, it sounds like one definition of groupware to me, Eric. Now, what approach does Lotus Notes take to groupware? Well, Lotus Notes is a group collaboration product that helps people work together more effectively. It's used to disseminate information, such as news or reference materials, routed around, such as mail or forms, mm -hmm. or interactive applications, such as discussions or tracking systems. All right, you've got lots of neat little icons up here on the Lotus Notes screen. What do these things do? Well, each of these icons is a separate notes application. Let me go into one of them, and uh, you'll see an example. This is the New York City Users Group application. This is a real uh, notes application that our customers use to interact with one another. Their mm -hmm. servers call the Lotus sales office in New York City, and they can th uh, talk about issues of common interest. For instance, uh, what you see here is a main document and then responses to those documents. If I go into this... Does the this, color coding mean anything there? Um, yeah, the, the, um, the color coding, mean the black... 
uh, the black documents are ones that have already been read uh, by I me, okay. and the red ones are, are, are documents that are new. Okay. Right. So if I go into this um, uh, here, you'll see that the uh, systems engineer has announced our documentation prices and then updated them. And then uh, one of the customers responded that he thinks it's a ridiculous price. And so, yeah. um, Meaning too high. Too high, yeah. I think, is what he meant. And uh, then another customer jumped in and said he agreed. And actually, several of them said that. There was an ongoing discussion about the pricing. And then um, later on, about, about four weeks later, uh, we announced new pricing. This here is a uh, hypertext link or a doc link, mm -hmm. which links to another document in this database. And you can see we lowered the prices. And uh, the, uh, when, the, when the customers saw that, they said, much better, um, thanks for listening to us, that yeah. kind so, of thing. So Notes really created a platform on which many people could communicate on, on, a, on an issue in which somebody wanted something to happen. That's right, and it created a work group across yeah. these different okay. companies. Um, the next application I'll show you is a different kind of application. This is a service tracking application that is used um, by, a, by a group that is handling questions that, are, uh, that come in from, uh, from customers who have mm -hmm. bought the product. So um, if I just open this up, you see a view by company name. If I go in here, I've got uh, a form that looks more like a, a database form here. Company name, is it a major account, address, etc. Capturing the key information. And then the responses are used um, to log each call, uh, problems that have been uh, reported, has it been followed up on, what kind of problem is it? Now, having this information in a database, we can view it in different ways as well. To do that, I'll just bring up the view menu. I can look at the closed problems. I can look at turnaround time. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll pull up this contract uh, renewal date view, and this shows which ones are active and which ones are overdue. If I just select that one, I can actually compose a reminder notice right here and uh, it brings in the name and address, it brings in a form letter, I can customize it, and at the bottom I can actually deliver it right through an outgoing mm -hmm. fax mm -hmm. gateway. And uh, then finally, the third application I'll show is this uh, presentation file. This is an application that we're using among uh, a sales team to share standard presentations and also to share customized presentations so people don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. Um, if I pull this up, um, You'll see what I have embedded in this document is an actual presentation that was created in um, Lotus Freelance Plus for Windows. If I double click on it, it will actually bring up Freelance if it isn't already uh, started and then actually bring up the, the presentation itself that, that uh, we're working on. So as I work on the presentation, I can make changes, I can add to it, et cetera, and then those changes will be automatically reflected back in, um, uh, in the notes document when I'm done. So there's one version of that presentation, and you're saying all these different salespeople can actually have their versions inside Lotus Notes, accessible right. to others. And we can update those presentations, and those updates will automatically get distributed so that everyone always has the latest version. Last question quickly. How do you price a product like this, which by definition is meant for lots of users, Eric? Well, we, we price it on a, on a per-user basis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we sell notes. Um, uh, directly from uh, Lotus in a bundled offering, and then we also sell it through value-added resellers on a per-user basis. And with Higgins, Howard? Well, we take a similar approach. We charge by the user, and yeah. there's also lots of components that are part of the plumbing for the gateways and the mm -hmm. mail servers and so things, and those are sold separately. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, sometimes it takes a while to figure out exactly what kind of groupware product is right for your work environment. We visited Chevron Information Technology in San Ramon, California, to find out how they evaluate different groupware products. Chevron has over 45,000 employees scattered around the country. More than a thousand of them are connected via computer networks. So a decision on what groupware product to buy is important. But Chevron's information manager says the problem is even more complicated than that. Right now in the market there's not one product that we've found that meets all the needs. So we find the best products of each of the areas and incorporate that and put that to the best use. The other problem in selecting groupware is that different groups require different functionality. One work group may use one part of a groupware product, whereas another group may use more. For instance, some groups only require electronic mail. That's all they really need. Others, maybe document management. Others, they might combine both of them. Others still want scheduling and other products. So it's a combination. So we're not looking at one product to solve all. Bill Skilton has tested over 20 calendar and meeting programs, but he still hasn't found one he likes. He did pick Microsoft Mail as Chevron's main email product, and he bought soft solution for the company's document management. But Chevron's information technology department decided to develop its own software for maintaining a corporate directory.
Despite not being able to find any one product to solve all of Chevron's groupware needs, Bill Skelton says the whole package of groupware products does allow Chevron employees to better communicate with each other. Work groups can be physically separated and still get their business done by communicating through groupware. Um, other advantages have been more exact in communication. There's less amb ambiguity where a voicemail message may not be interpreted correctly where a written document usually is. Skilton says computer networks and groupware are a more efficient way for employees to communicate across distances than telephones or fax machines. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Next up, two groupware products for the Macintosh. Joining us now are Connell Ryan, president and CEO of On Technology. Also with us, Reed Lewis, president of Group Technologies. Reed, we're talking about what's called groupware, I guess. I know you call aspects collaborative software. What we've seen so far seems to be kind of high-class email systems. Is that what we mean by groupware, or is it more than that? I think it's more than that. There are really two kinds of groupware. There's the, the uh, email-enabled type software that you've seen earlier. Mm -hmm. And then there's the real-time angle, which is what Aspects uh, is, and it's unique in that capacity. All right, Connell, you're going to show us Instant Update from On Technology, and where does that fit on the spectrum of groupware? Well, Instant Update is a new workgroup tool for the Macintosh that works in a networked environment, obviously, and allows groups to collaborate on any projects where sharing information makes sense. Um, through what we call live documents, and I was going to show you a couple examples of those live documents today. All right, so we're going to pretend you're two people here, right? And this right. is a network, uh, one terminal over here on the left machine, and you're going to be another guy on the right machine. Right, I'm going to be me on the left machine, okay. and I'm going to be Bob Simmons over here on the right machine. I'm going to start off on the left over here by showing you how you actually create a live document from scratch. In order to do that, I'm taking over your show, and I'm going to plan a new show covering the spreadsheet wars. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little table here, um, with company product and presenter, and I'm going to make this a live document. I may want to do Borland as the next company. So this is Connell working on his computer. Right, but I don't want to work alone on this. I'd actually, now that I've lined up Manzi, I'd like someone else like you or someone else mm -hmm. on the crew um, to go after Borland and Microsoft and see if they can get commitments from them. So what I do to create a live document, um, everything in the product revolves around one button. We decided that you know, like consumer electronics, the best thing to have is just one button that did right, everything. Right. So we consolidated all the functions in this one update button. There's a little arrow pointing out which says that I haven't actually made the thing live yet. Once I press it, I name the file and I choose a bunch of people to use it. In this case, I'm going to choose Bob and Marianne and maybe Zig uh, to collaborate with me on this file. As soon as I press OK, why don't we come over to the right machine and I'll show what happens when Bob actually sees the file coming in. All right, First so you're, of now, all, you're now Bob. All right, I'm now Bob, and you'll see that I've got a new um, file called Computer Chronicles New Show from Connell Ryan. And I can open that up, and it's going to create a local copy of the file on my machine. Mm -hmm. And I can come in as Bob and start writing. So if Bob is going to cover Quattro and get Philippe Kahn to, to be involved, and he's also going to do Microsoft and Excel, but we don't know who's going to be coming mm -hmm. from from okay. uh, Microsoft yet. He can add the things that um, he's got. And you'll see there's a gray arrow pointing out there from his machine now. If we move back to Connell, now I've got an arrow pointing into the document. So there's, I there's, could have been there's somewhere, updated information. Right, I, I could have been out of the office for the last two hours in a okay. meeting. When I walk in, I see that there's an arrow pointing into Computer Chronicles. I press the button. And, and all that information, information that comes Bob in. Had put in. And the, the new information okay. is there from Bob. Now you'll see that I actually, if I click in any of these cells, up here in the status line, it actually shows when that Bob wrote it and when he wrote it. Mm -hmm. So it gives me additional information. There's actually a database underpinning the product that, that makes it very right. powerful. So we can go on and on back and forth, trading, you know, I could add cells to the table, add pictures, whatever else. But what I thought I would do um, in the interest of brevity is actually zoom forward to a little bit more complex example, mm -hmm. which will show you how to use Instant Update to actually manage projects, which is the key use we see out there. Um, let me come up to this file called Managing Tasks. And in this scenario, um, I'm putting together a packaging project in which a number of things have to be accomplished. And basically, all I've done so far is construct the table. Now, we think that one of the crucial aspects of any piece of workgroup software is that it has to be great at collecting input. Most of the tools you have now um, generate output. Yeah, you know, yeah. they print out something. 
a workgroup tool that works well actually generates input. So maybe I've been on the road for two weeks and I come back and I want to see what's happening with this project. All I do is press the update button and you'll see that whether it's happened in an hour, two hours, three days, or, or seven weeks, all of the different people who are contributing to the packaging project have now entered input mm -hmm. and I can catch up instantly. So I'm yeah. never reviewing stale information. I'm always on top of, uh, of current events. Um, one of the other things you can do in addition to adding information is add people. So if at this point the project needs to go to someone else, everyone's actually involved in this one, um, I can add people. The other right. thing that drives me nuts if I send memos to people or, 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 or think I may be looking at old information is who's actually read it. You'll see in this case John and Marianne haven't opened the file. Bob, Kelly, and Candace have opened it, but there's new changes they mm -hmm. haven't seen yet. So you can actually keep tabs on whether people are actually right. keeping up to date with the file. Um, other powerful concepts in the product are being able to search not only by text, but since we've got that database underpinning it, you can find out what Bob's written. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the, right, few the ways you can use it. All right, I'm going to ask you to slide both keyboards and mice okay. over here to read, and we're going to turn to aspects now. Great. Before we start on the demo read, what approach does aspects take? How is this going to be different from what we've seen now so far? Well, everything we've seen today is uh, asynchronous, or it happens later, kind of like voicemail. Mm -hmm. If you take that paradigm further, Aspects is like the telephone where you're working with someone while you're talking to them on the phone, you're making changes on the computer, and everyone sees what's happened. Okay, so our little network here, again, we have two people working simultaneously. They're on the phone and they're on their terminals. Exactly. All right, show us what to do. Okay, the first thing we've already done is opened up some files here, and if I scroll down on the machine on the right, you'll notice that the machine on the left follows right along, so that we're always looking at the same part of the document. In this case, we're looking at Texas. And likewise, if the screen on the left scrolls down or pages down, let's get down here to California. So if this were Connell controlling this machine over here, as he changes the screen, your screen changes also. That's right. So you okay. never lose your place in your conversation. So everybody's looking at the same thing at the same time. That's right. In fact, if I even move uh, on the, from the machine on the right to another document, the machine on the left follows right along. Right. Again, so you're always seeing the same thing as the people you're working with. Okay. Okay. Next. Aspects has pointer tools that you grab on the bottom right hand uh, of the screen. And you'll notice the little black hand as I point to the A on the screen on the right, you'll see it pointing to the A on the screen on the left. And if my collaborator got involved here and chose a different pointing tool, as he moves his pointer around and points to the A in Aspects, it points to the same part mm -hmm. of the document on both screens. So each member of the meeting has their own little token so you can keep track of who's who. That's right. And it allows you to reach out 200 yards or 3,000 okay. miles and show someone what you're talking about. Um, once you've discussed something and you decide to make a change, for instance, if I ask my collaborator to move this Macintosh up into the lo top left-hand corner of the document, he puts down his pointer, grabs the Macintosh and drags it to the top right-hand corner, and you'll notice on both screens Same thing happened on your machine. the documents move. Likewise, if we're over in a text document, okay, mm -hmm. let's start at the top. If the machine on the right makes a selection of this entire paragraph, you'll see on the left there's an indication of that selection. Yeah. And if he makes a change, for instance, he makes the typeface 18 point, immediately the other people in the conference see that change. All right, read briefly, when you have eight or 10 or 12 people in this meeting at the same time, one of the problems is who's in charge? How do you manage this meeting? How do you mediate the differences between who wants to do what when? Well, Aspects allows three levels of control for different kinds of meetings. There's free-for-all, which we've been operating in, okay. that lets everyone work at once. If that becomes a problem, the moderator can set a higher level of control to enforce taking turns or to even put one person in charge, and let's try that. The first thing you noticed on the machine on the right is that his, my name is up here and I have the pen in hand. You're the guy in charge of the meeting. Right? I'm in charge and I've got the pen. On the left, the user gets a message that says the rules have changed yeah. and he instead sees the pen laying on the table. So if he wants to edit, he clicks on the pen and requests editing control. So he's raising his hand essentially. He's raising his hand. Yeah. I see this flashing icon on the machine on the right and I can go and hand it to him. Mm -hmm. And he has edit control then. And when I think he's done, I simply grab the pen back and cut him off at that point. That's terrific. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I think we better understand groupware now. Stay tuned for this week's Computer News on Random Access.
In the random access file this week, this is a special summer edition with the focus on software. Here are last week's best-selling software titles for the PC according to PC Connection. Microsoft came in number one and number two with DOS and Windows upgrades. And Microsoft rounded out the top ten with the Excel upgrade and Windows 3.1. Next up, Paul Schindler and our summer software review. There it is, one of the simplest visual cues known to man, the traffic light. Now, the fact that information can be communicated visually escapes a lot of people, but not the people who made Manage Pro. This Windows software manages people, and what do managers want to know? What's wrong? So Manage Pro offers status boards. Green means fine, yellow means caution, red means something's wrong. Double click on a box to find out exactly what's wrong. You can look at goals on a status board too, just click down to get the gory details. You can also view your goals along a timeline or as text. Now, most people don't use project management tools because they're too darn complex. Manage Pro isn't really a project manager, it's a people manager so simple an executive can use it. It costs $400 from Avantos Performance Systems in Emeryville, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, makers of the Snap Plus video adapter. Snap Plus hardware and software turn a PC into a video production workstation. Snap Plus from Cardinal Technologies, made in the USA. And by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.